Hi everyone. Um, well, here with another show is for the ATF walkthrough. Today we'll be going over working with test fit in ATF. And um, as usual, my name is Louis Odini, and they are done PM for ELM. And I have here with me um Amanda. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Amanda Sones, and I'm a technical consultant for Impact. And a little bit about what we do is we help Impact customers kind of get um, enabled in particular products of interest, learn things like best practices, and also give them a head start by providing them the, those types of resources that would allow them to do so. Good stuff. All right. So um, next is um, the safe album notice, um, as usual. This is what we show you don't make for looking um decisions based on what we're going to talk about. Um the next one is um our agenda. Um we're gonna go over understanding ATF test suites, then we're gonna go over the benefits of the test suites. We also um talk about the test suite hierarchy and um we do the we'll talk about the best practices when it comes to working with test suites. Then um, Amanda will take us take us through um demo concerning the switch. Um so understanding the switch. So basically um this these are structured collection of text test cases um or test suite organized for the purpose of testing an application. Um it follows an hierarchical structure which we're going we're going to talk about later in this deck. Um and this hierarchy you can actually arrange or place your tests based on um how you want them to run or the order in which you want them to run. There are so many um, key attributes of the test suite. The first one being the hierarchy, which I mentioned earlier. The next one is also group functionality. You can also, it also helps you with an efficient execution, which means you don't have to run your test one after the order. You can just arrange them in an order where you want them to be run. You can also schedule your test suites just like you're scheduling a typical test. So when you have um, the scheduling process in place, it helps you also make your work better and faster. Um, so the benefits of test suites are the first one, which I said, is efficient test ex execution. You can run multiple tests seamlessly with a single bot in a simple action. The next one is a comprehensive test coverage. The fact that you can actually place so many tests within a test suite means you have wider coverage when it comes to testing an application. You also get um, better result visibility and analysis. You can analyze all your test um, results in one view because of the fact that you ran them under a test suite. You can schedule your test run. You can also get the hierarchical stru test structure, which I mentioned. Then you also have this ability to also manage them in such a way that you can copy um, tests from one um, location to another hierarchy within the test itself. Or you can also add this test by filtering. Let's say, for example, you you want to only run um, all the tests that with change management under one um, umbrella. You can use the filter to bring them under the same umbrella and add them to the suite. So this is the hierarchy, typical hierarchy of a test suite. Um, you can see the test suite one. Then under the first test suite, you have different tests under it. Then you can also have another branch under this um, the first test suite, and also further branch it down. So this is this gives you like a a, a comprehensive um view or a wider coverage of running your test and having it in automated. Um. So not now. Uh, Amanda is going to go over the the demo. Yes. But some of um give us some information on some best practices or tips on how to work with test suites in ATF. Yes. So I will take that screen share from you. Okay. And get right on to the demo. Um. So the first thing that we will be navigating to is the actual test suites module on ATF. Um. So of course you want to type ATF in that filter navigator. I have it favorited here, but we will let me pin this. Navigate to that suite section, and this will show you all of the out-of-box suites that are currently in your instance, as well as any custom suites that you may have made from scratch. Um, another way to get directly to the out-of-box ones would be to click this quick start suites. Um, but for the purposes of this demo, we're going to start with just kind of creating a new one. Um, so I won't worry too much about the names here, but you have, um, or regarding creating a new suite, of course, you can add any type of test or test suite inside of um 
a sweet, but we do have some recommendations on what types of sweets that we um, encourage you to create. Um, so one of those would be creating a sweet for a particular application. Um, if you look into any of the out-of-box suites, you'll see that's kind of how ServiceNow has it set up. You'll see everything for incidents, for example, change, problem management, and things of that sort. Um, so that is one way that you could do that. Um, another recommendation that we have is to um, create suites for a particular functionality. Um, so if you have a specific customization um, and every type of test related to that customization, you can package that into one suite and kind of get more specific with that. Um, so those are just um, a kind of or a few examples of what types of suites that we recommend to create. Um, but there are a couple of ways. So the one of the things that you can do on this view here after you create your name um, is set a filter condition. The benefit of setting a filter condition would be, let's say, for example, you have 100 catalog item tests. Um, you can actually set a filter condition to kind of capture all of those tests without having to manually one by one add each um, of those tests into a suite, just because that can get pretty repetitive and time consuming. Uh, so there are a couple of different um, options that you can do to kind of filter that down and target a specific test. Uh, but I will also save this record. Um, once you save it, you will also have um, a few related lists down here, allowing you to add a specific test into the test suite. You can add a child suite. Um, kind of going back to that hierarchy that we showed you, you can have suites within suites. Um, so that would be the way to kind of add those in here in this child suite module. Um, the other results here, we have test suites results and test suite schedules. Um, in case you have any type of running schedule on a suite, you'd be able to see that here within the actual um, record and manage that. But I actually do have one that is already created. Um, but in order to create or kind of manually add that, you would just do a new um, record here and you'd be able to add the name of the suite, um, set that execution order if needed, or abort on failure. Um, one thing about this abort on failure, I'll go back to that example saying, let's say you have um, 100 catalog items. Something that you could do is if one particular test step fails, you can just completely abort the entire test suite and um, kind of get out of that or you can just skip over it and execute the remaining tests. So that's the purpose of this abort on failure field here. Um, so I will go to my um, test suite that is already created. Um, so right now I have one, but then like I mentioned earlier, we'll kind of show you how to manually add those. Um, so the one that I am going to add would be this test here and then submit. Um, so I will go back, let me see. And then now that is in here. Um, so as far as the execution of your test, um, you can either set a specific execution order, like was mentioned, if you kind of want that um, to run in a particular manner, or um, depending on the available workers that you have in your instance, you can also run your test in parallel. Um, so if you do have av the available workers, you can kind of um, run those tests simultaneously and cut down on the amount of time that it takes um, for you to execute your test. And this will be really helpful just because, again, if you do have lots of tests, having that client test runner open um, could, uh, depending on how you have it set up, if that client test runner isn't open for enough time for all of your tests to execute, you would lead to some failures. Um, so I will click this run test suite button. And later on, we'll get into the cloud runner. Now you can utilize that. But for now, we're going to use the client test runner um, and watch this text execute. Um, so the two tests that I do have in this instance, um, there's some simple portal tests that um, creates or submit some record producers um, and kind of verify the visibility of that record within the portal and also can verify if they're able to um, receive some of the updates. So in this case, they're kind of communicating with the agent through the portal, and then we're going to verify um, that they're able to see that in the back end, that the agent is able to kind of see that. And then the second example that I have is a, it's a pretty short test, but this is a failing example, just so we can kind of see how to troubleshoot. Um, but this one is going to try to submit a catalog item, and it is not going to work. Um, and I will show you after this test how to kind of um, review those test results and analyze that. Um, so on this other end here, we kind of see the status of both tests. Um, we're able to click some drop down, see kind of the, the status of the um, steps as well. But if you want to get more specific, you can click this go to results 
um, button, or you can also see it from the tab as well. Um, and another option we have would be rerun failed test. If you want to only rerun the failed test, you would have that option here as well. Uh, we will click this go to sweet results. And some of the options that you see here, it'll show you just an overview of the test results. So you'll see um, both of the tests, one succeeded, one failed. It'll show you the test suites results. So in this case, we this is just one suite. So that's why we're saying ATF demo suite, this one failed because one of the tests in the suite failed. Um, if you do have child suites, for example, um, and let's say one of the tests in the child suite fails, they would also be able to see that information and just directly go into that child suite. Um, and now this one just shows only the failed tests. So we'll be able to click on this link here and kind of analyze the results and see specifically why it failed. Um, so some of the options that you will be able to have, you'll see the status here that's read as well as the summary information. Um, so this typically tells you exactly what happened, but there are some cases, most of the time it's direct, but there are some cases where there could be a failure and it's not necessarily clear on what happened. Um, so there are screenshots, for example, that you're able to add, um, as well as that debug test step button that we um, covered on the last video of the series. So I definitely recommend to uh, review that so you can see kind of uh, more details on how to use that debug test button. Okay, so I will go, let me go back to the actual test suite. Um, so back on that test suite, um, if you want to mark a test as mutually exclusive, um, so like I mentioned earlier, sometimes, um, or if you do have the available workers, your test will run in parallel. Um, but if you have some type of dependencies, definitely make sure that you set the execution order. But there's also another thing that you can do to kind of force the system uh, to not run your test um, simultaneously. So something that you can do, let's say I have this test here, and if there's a test that I really don't want um, to run at the same time, you can set this mutually exclusive record here, um, add a mutual exclusion, and then it would allow you to specify the specific test that you do not want to run um, in parallel, just to kind of force that in case the execution order doesn't work. Okay. And then the last thing, um, we did already cover this in the last section, um, but we do have those schedules tab. And I do have one that is a schedule that is already set up, um, but you do have the option to add those suites um, in there. So I'll just do ATF demo suite, click submit. And that would be how you'll add a suite into one of your schedules. But that is all I have for the demo. Is there anything you would like to add? Uh, so I think you covered the basics. Um, uh, I'll just run over the the what's it called, the best practices. Is also to support what you said. Yes. Nice. Yes. Then I'll stop share, and then we have that best practices slide. Okay. All right. So um, best practices. Um, what are the things we advise you to do basically when it comes to running test rates? That'll be all. For today, so um, we're going to have this um slide posted with the video, so you can get some of this um resources we have on this resource resource page, and um, I'm gonna we're done, right? Okay. Yes. All right. So thank you for watching all uh as well. We are going to add more series to this um walkthrough, just so you have um less friction when it comes to adopting ATF for your automated test. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.